You're asking yourself a question, are you? You're saying, quo? Yes. KW. Now, what is that? That's the equilibrium constant for water. What do you mean equilibrium constant for water? You mean water's in an equilibrium? This is pretty cool. Water molecules, when they react and hit other water molecules, what? What are you talking about? You're talking about that inside water when water is actually just sitting there? You mean water molecules can actually hit each other with enough activation energy to be able to transfer a proton? Yep. And when water does that with another water molecule, and it doesn't do it very much, right? It can make, because you're transferring an H positive from one to another, you get hydronium, and then the one that actually transfers that proton is left with hydroxide. You're making hydronium hydroxide in equal quantity into solution. Really? No kidding. Yeah. So here's the deal. What are these concentrations in solution? Very, very small. 0 decimal zero 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 one moles per liter each. Well, okay, so what does that mean? That means that at equilibrium, the concentrations of these two ions are both 1 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. And if that's the case, at equilibrium, if that's the case, and by the way, we don't, water's a liquid here, we don't care about water liquid in terms of its presence in the equilibrium expression, right? So when we write this law here, K equals, remember this is equilibrium, the concentration of the hydronium times the concentration of the hydroxide ion, leave out the water because of divided by, uh -uh, just one, divided by one, this we call the KW, the equilibrium constant for water, and obviously when you plug this number into here and this number into here, the KW equals, <laughs> times, the KW equals 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14. We don't have to write the unit, but it'd be mole squared per liter squared. Here's the deal. That is the equilibrium constant for water. Now what does that mean? That, that always has to be maintained. If you take water, and then you add some acid to it, the pH goes less than seven, right? Now, what actually is happening in that water? Because it's really the water that's being affected. A little bit of chemical into water, what's happening to the water? An equilibrium is shifting for the water. And because water is in an equilibrium here, and if you add hydronium, let's pretend that you add enough hydronium to change this concentration from 1 times 10 to the negative 7 to 1 times 10 to the negative 6, because that's a greater number, right? Not 10 to the negative 6 is greater than 10 to the negative 7. Well, if the equilibrium constant must be maintained, and it does, at 25 degrees Celsius, because that is the equilibrium constant for water at that temperature, look, then this has to go to what? To equal 10 to the negative 14 still, when you multiply these two together, that has to go to 10 to the negative 8. Do you see that? Here's the thing, 10 to the negative 6, 10 to the negative 8, that number is greater than that number, so at equilibrium here, you've got more hydronium than hydroxide if you added an acid, and that makes the water acidic. It has an increased concentration of hydronium. As much as the hydronium goes up in a solution, the hydroxide will go down, and conversely, if the hydroxide goes up, the hydronium would go down. And the interesting thing is, the pH would go in the, from that original solution where water has a pH of 7 normally at 25 degrees Celsius, in this case the pH is 6. Why? Because of that number right there. So actually, instead of saying the concentration of hydronium ion in the solution is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 6, we just say the pH is 6. Oh. So that actually means then that we have to come up with a mathematical formula to get rid of this and get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of that negative sign and just keep the six. And that's coming up right now.